Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So I'm working on the uh, Blackstone comic here. Uh, been off and on on this project, but I'm bound to determine now to stay diligent and get this puppy done. So no more excuses. It's time to sit down, draw some comics, and make it happen, Captain. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm making that commitment to you guys, just so you know. So at any rate, what I figured I would share with you today is a uh, just a quick word balloon uh, demonstration because I've been doing this, I've actually been doing this on the iPad Pro. Uh, just so you know that when you get the Clip Studio version, the updated version on your desktop and the uh, um, you know updated app, which I'm, I'm assuming it's automatically updated or the newest version because it's still so relatively new. But anyways, they both have to align and you can take the full story document that you see here and shuffle it back and forth through uh, the cloud space on this, which is actually... The icon's on the other side, forgive me, but my uh, setup's a little bit weird here. But you hit this little icon that looks like the Clip Studio logo, and you get this, and it gives you so much uh, storage, and you can shuffle uh, your files, your full page documents, or your full story document, that's what this is, uh, with all the pages in it back and forth. So, highly effective. That's not what this video is about. I just want to make sure that you're aware of it, because it's pretty darn neat. A lot of people don't like the subscription model, but... I'll tell you, that savings uh, of time uh, and workflow is huge. And uh, I find myself working on the comic a lot more now uh, because I can do every aspect of it, you know, on the go. So it's really neat. Um, so today I'm on the Cintiq, though, at the desktop and explaining this. So, for instance, you know, you see I drew in a word balloon here that's hand-drawn. And if you want, I can do a video on that later. But that's just, you know, pretty self-explanatory. But I could, you know, draw it out for you and show you. Uh, but when doing the word balloons, it's it's pretty easy, but I figured I would show you a couple tips that I've learned thus far. So one of the things I recommend that I don't do enough of is draw in the space that you're going to be using for your word balloons. Now, a panel like this, it works out great. I got a lot of extra real estate around the characters and what's going on, but you need to really not do what I do, did here. <laughs> Put like all these close-ups together. Well, good luck fitting in my text there. So Make sure to draw it in, even if it's real rough, you know, just something. I knew I wanted it up here, so I left uh, real estate open up there. Just do that, you know, be aware of that. After that, you kind of just drag, uh, yeah, excuse me, drag and drop a, uh, a balloon in place. And then to edit this, you can just simply start to up the lines. But now see it didn't do anything. You've got to take this little dimensional looking box. This is Operation. Remember that game? That was always fun. All right, so there's there's the box highlighted. It's got to be selected with that, not the move tool. So make sure you got that. And then now what happens is you can edit this very quickly. You know, just punch it up, and you can even leave this to default settings. Remember, you can drag these open so that you got more space there. You can leave defaults in here so that you start to move really fast as you do this. I also recommend making, me personally, anyways, I make the topmost layer my word balloons layer or a group but usually a layer, and I do it all in there. That way I can, uh, you know, move these around and it's on its floating layer or whatever. And, you know, kind of organized anyways. So then after you've got that, you've got it to the thickness you want. Remember that you can change the shapes. You can use a different brush to go around the edge as well so you can get some pretty neat effects uh, messing around with these and creating some custom brushes there. But we're just going to go with the solid for now. And you can also change the shape of these. So when you get into here... You can do different things like, uh, and you generally want to start this uh, with here and then drag it out. But you can do your box shapes. You know, you can do something kind of strange here, whatever. Uh, you can draw some of these with the, uh, which one is it? I think it's the balloon pen. I think you can just kind of draw a balloon. Yeah, you can, you can do all sorts of neat stuff there. The main one I use is this and the square. That's, that's about it. And I toggle on the different uh, size here. I'll also show you another way to edit this. You can also take your balloon tail, which is highly important. I leave this set to spline, and then you can just basically click, what was it, click and click, and then double click your last one. So basically this is controlling your curve like a bezier handle. So let's say that we want to go up to here, here, and then something like that. I play around with this a little bit to get it, you know, looking the way that I want. But then the other thing that I'll do, because it never looks natural on its own, I go back to this tool, I select this, and you can edit just this with the control points. So again, it's almost like, uh, you know, like vectors or whatever. You can move the bezier handles and 
uh, really get these to look just the way that you want, which I really recommend because the, the better you get at this, the more natural it looks. And then from there, you just take the text tool, and drop it in there. Uh, let's see, I think I like the one called CC, what is it? CC, it's one of the famous guys. Why can't I remember it? Hopefully it's in here. Where are you? Hold on, let me use my, my scroll wheel a little faster. Where is it? it? Disappeared on me. No. Is it was there Action Man? There's a few of them that I go to. Like, well, here's one that looks comic booky. Uh, the one that's in the um, I'm gonna be upset if this isn't on the desktop version, but it's in the app version. That's kind of weird. It's called CC, um, not Kirby Crackle, but uh, Qbert. Yeah, because Qbert School of Art and Design, right? So. Uh, it's he's got his own font or something or what they've made one that is with his name I would imagine they had to ask permission for that, but it says CC uh, Qbert or whatever so in this one We're just gonna go with back issues, you know, which is still a comic book font font you can tell so uh, here he's he's telling bot, you know, he just smashed a dent in the uh, uh, Wall or whatever uh, circuit board whatever it is and he's like I don't even know my own story here and he's like now fix that. But I, I think I would put that down here. Now fix that. He's a Blackstone's a bit of a jerk, just so you know, people. But you know, he's he's bossing around his little robot dude there. Um, okay, so then you go back over to here. You can center justify. You can go back to here. You can select just this portion of it size this up you know maybe make the the one uh you know you want to get creative with this a little bit so maybe take the uh, text tool and let's grab just the top letters Oop. it's a bit clunky here you got to double click first then drag click and drag and let's drop these down just a little bit and then give it a little bit more impact to to that you know, whatever. This is all up to you and however you like to do it. And then and then here instead of a check or okay, it's got X's and O's, tic tac toe for some reason, but just uh it's this one. Hit the O there for okay. And there you go. Just as simple as that. You got a word balloon uh with some comic book looking font. I'm sure there's a lot better and more creative ways to do it than that. But the other trick I wanted to show you or just to keep in mind, uh, because there's a lot of things that you could do with this, you could click out here, zoom in. And you can just edit these as well, you know, so you can you can kind of get creative with it, you know So like this is kind of funny like if you're doing uh, a creepy voice You can like maneuver it to be all weird looking like that like spooky, I guess I don't know whatever and then command Z go back if you don't like it, but it's pretty easy I mean with these uh, you know these little handles and everything and you can even create custom shapes And you know, maybe we'll get more into that, but I just wanted to give you a basic kind of understanding of how these work and yeah it's it's pretty darn handy and I just I can't brag enough about this app or program I should say this is the program version uh, about just being able to create the comic fully inside here you know if you go with the higher end EX version whatever but that allows you to have all these pages together you can do your pencils your inks your word balloons the whole shebang so I highly recommend it, but you know, teach their own. I know a lot of people will use a, a multitude of programs uh, together to get the job done, maybe to save a little bit on the budget. But I kind of feel like if you are making a go of this stuff and you can figure out a way to make some coin with it, hopefully that's what we're all trying to do is you know get our dream out there, our ideas, and, and make a buck while we're at it. Uh, then you know it's maybe not that big of a deal to have the app version and then the the desktop version. I think I paid a couple hundred for it, but it's. It's well worth it. It's just a fantastic program. And keep in mind too with this tool you can do different tails as well. So let me get back to that and show you. Uh, I think it's spline, polyline. Yeah, spline, polyline, and straight line. Uh, I guess I should explain that real quick, my bad. So let me do that. So just as it kind of sounds though, you go to polyline. And polyline is kind of the same thing, but it's a point. So this is kind of neat. Remember you could still, again, edit these as well. You know, you almost have to because 
I'm sure you can edit it by the uh, the other way with the uh, width of the tail. And then can you hit enter? I just click over here to release. So that's kind of neat. Oh, now we got a double tail going. And then I'll show you one more where, let's see. And that, you know what? Actually, I'll probably use this on, on his. I know, I sound like I was wrapping up the video. Let me just do this real quick. So yeah, I'll do one for bot real quick. So go back to the top one where it says ellipse balloon. Notice it changes the, the thumbnail. That actually threw me off for a second there. Go back here and then let's make sure that we're at the same brush size before we get started. So just highlight that. I think we're at 25, if I remember right, but let me try that. And then now as we drag it, it's already got that same width. And let's take the balloon tail and let's put the polyline so you click click again double click to release and you could do this as many times as you need to so you could do like these crazy you know kind of wackadoos or whatever uh, let's go actually I kind of like that it looks more like he's you know he's got a weird voice or whatever uh, let's select that with this and again adjust these points just a little bit since we're already here looks a little bit more well thought out I think Let's try that yeah so it looks a little more tacky I don't know and you could really just keep adding these two for another effect so let's try that uh, where you at again yeah so you could make some of these where they're like pointed outward for shock I guess and then again get in here and select them move them around and, you know, you got to figure, too, if you get, like, a word balloon that you like that took you a minute to design or whatever, it's all digital, so just save it out. You know, make sure you, you know, create a nice little copy of these. Uh, you can even make these into custom brushes, whatever you got to do, layers, share them with your buds, you know, have some fun with it. So you could do something like that, and then I imagine you could probably even copy. Yeah, now notice that, too, if you got the move tool... You're going to move the whole layer. Just want you to be aware of that. Command Z to go back. That's why it's got to be this little dimensional box thingamajig. And then let me see if you can copy this. I'm kind of curious if you can. Copy. Paste. I'm just right clicking just so you know. Yep. You can copy them too. Isn't that fancy? Thanks Clip Studio. You're awesome. I love how it blends the, the stroke path or whatever right into it. Just easy peasy lemon squeezy because that's what I'm all about okay so let's take and uh, type that again in fact you could probably let's try this while we're here let's grab the oh remember you can't use that one goodness let's try uh, right click copy right click paste BAM look at that so you can expedite that part you can bring that over here use your text tool double click drag and put what something like that. I don't know I don't know what a robot would say if he was told to clean somebody else's mess up or fix somebody else's punch to the wall thing up here which just doesn't look great I'm gonna have to add a little bit of techie lines it just looks like he punched a piece of glass or something I don't know but yeah, so that's it, folks. I just wanted to give you, hopefully, some insight into how to do this. Obviously, you can be very creative with it, come up with your own ideas, and just be sure to comment below. Let everybody know what you think. Uh, you know, share the way that you use these tools and what you think works. And if I miss something, then let me know. I'm not perfect. Never said I was. So thanks very much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate the support of the channel. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.